one so far is forcing the blue side team into being flexible. You know, this actually happened once. It was <clears throat> Flash Rolls versus Koo Tigers. Koo Tigers actually left up uh, Gangplank for the first pick. The goal being that they would take all the junglers away with a Lisa and Ben and a Rek'Sai pick and then take Lulu as well. Turns out they forgot that, like, Karsa could also play Nidalee and the whole thing collapsed and that was the Flash Rolls poke comp when they won in week one. We see occasionally teams go for that play, and but you're right, Chad, I really do want to see teams learn these sort of counter picks for the Mordecai's and the gangplay strategies and try to break those apart. Right now, though, Flash Wolves is just going to keep the Twisted Fate ban they kept from game one, add the two ubiquitous ones. Meanwhile, Origin actually bringing their first Darius ban to the tournament. The Varus Pope goes away, and now Maple's LeBlanc is gone. I mean, a couple big questions are raised already. Where does the Lulu go, and where does the Jinx go? I'll answer your first question. Origin first picks Lulu. Flash Rules would probably play Jinx again. So as answered that for me, man. But I mean, especially <laughs> if they're going to be playing against a Jinx, why ban the Varus? Because they could have opened up another ban very easily right here. Well, this is the thing is, it's, it's what- Basically, they're forcing them into picking Jinx in first or two. Right. Otherwise, it, they can threaten the Jinx pick later. Well, it's what a bunch of teams did against AHQ in the last week as well when they went on a good tear with the Jinx. It was, these teams were banning away the support staff and saying, but we can kill the Jinx herself. Now, that of course didn't pan out and AHQ qualified for the top eight. But that's the goal. Steal the Lulu away, remove the mid lane, or at least the, the top lane sort of hyperspeed to make the comp work. And you see the Flash Rolls doubt themselves here. Are we going to pick up at least? Because they have not shown a tendency to play that early at least. So Origin might get both really strong picks here, Lulu and Elise, because Flash Rolls just can't play the champion well enough. Also, the Kalista is up for Niels as well. And in terms of finding a good bot lane matchup, there is the first Elise of the tournament for Karsa. The Jinx, of course, still comes through for NL. And now Origin get the size of their opponents. Yeah, really forced, in my opinion, to picking the Jinx early there. A lot of times teams don't like picking their AD carry with their first two picks on the red side. Uh, and they also end up kind of picking away Amazing Zelise. It's actually something that Flash Wolves had banned on blue side a couple of times during group stage, which makes you think Karsa doesn't want to play it. But he's such a mechanically gifted jungler, I imagine he'll be able to. I would like to see a Morgana steal here for Miffy, because I feel a lot of what NL relies up for staying alive is that Black Shield. It's actually strong into at least two. You can block the Cocoons, and the Black Shield doesn't even get touched because Cocoons deal zero damage. Callista. Yeah, I mean, this is actually the first time Origin hasn't first picked Callista when it was up for them. So realizing that the Lulu was more important, that Callista wasn't go, gonna go over to NL anytime soon. The Rek'Sai comes through anyway, so Origin still actually hiding a lot of their important roles here. Lulu, of course, can go top or mid and maybe even support, so hiding that one for now, hoping Flash Wolves show one of these lanes that Lulu can go into a good matchup. Yeah, and I think Krepo's right about the Morgana, at least. You could have done Morgana, Callista. That actually is a pretty decent lane, but this would make the most sense for Flash Wolves. Not only do they need it to protect NL, who, by the way, had nearly 1,000 damage per minute last game as well, so sticking to his average of doing <laughs> substantially Ridiculous more than damage. every other Jinx. A lot of that is because they picked compositions that can peel and protect him. And with the Elise, it's a really old school composition. One binding into a cocoon. It's five seconds of immobility for the person who gets hit by that if they don't build Mercury Treads. And it's usually certain. Absolutely so. A couple of engage tools coming in for Flash Wolves. And to follow up on your Elise point, someone told me uh, Kars is one and one on the split for Elise. So two Elise games for the entire summer split. Not exactly a veteran. Flash Wolves are drafting another clear identity composition. There's only one thing you want to do, is group up and siege with this composition, or group up and team fight and protect that Jinx over and over. And on the analyst desk at the start of the day, Crumb said Stake had been the rock for flashers in the top lane, and Krupp and I kind of look at each other and like, ah, he's been down like 12 CS to 10, is that really? Then I pointed the fact that he played Malphite once. Uh -huh. And nice now fun. he's truly a rock in the top lane. Thanks, Krupp. Nice pun. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. This is good. Chat's coming to the dark side. Nice pun. Thanks. And here we go, guys. The Anivia hover in for Xpeke. Interesting. Origin need wave clear right now against this composition that really wants to group up, especially in the mid lane. We talked about how Origin plays a spread out style, and uh, Flash will center themselves a lot in that mid lane, looking for both sieges and kills. They want wave clear. If Anivia is the answer, I'm not quite sure. Apparently, to Origin, it is. And they unbench the Kench. This is truly going to answer. It's an AD carry and support who can save each other. Oh, man. It's so hard for someone to get caught out in this fight. I love the Tom Kench specifically into Flash Wolves. The solution to a person getting caught out for five seconds of immobility is you just eat them. 
in the middle of it and throw him to safety. So if Mifty eats the egg from Expecta and then gets pulled in by Fate's Call, transfer the What happened? Transfer the egg away. Well, really, I, I want to do more testing on this matchup because what happens uh, if your Fate's... Uh, there's just too many <laughs> things. You can eat while like a Fate's Call is casting. Can Callista throw herself? Like, I want to know all these questions. I think it stuns. I don't know if you can because no, it locks you out of spells. But I'm yeah. wondering if you can. I don't use think, the I don't think you can devour time. Fate's Call. Maybe you can. Someone will tell me I'm wrong on Twitter. But I'm gonna bet that you can't do it. And we're gonna see what the last pick is in for Flash Wolves now. What their mid lane pick is going to be into this Anivia. I actually like Anivia into Victor. If Maple ends up playing that, I think that's a fine yeah. matchup for Anivia. Overall. Okay, so a team fight mid laner for Maple. This is first non assassin of the World Championship. Victor coming through here, and of course, 0 and 1, they could really use some victory. Yeah, he had played three LeBlanc games, Gangplank, Yasuo, Ari, and Echo up until this point. I mean, victory usually gives you good wave clear, which leads you to... Yeah, once you once you evolve it. Nice pun. Thank you. I mean, you really just use my pun, but it's okay. You get credit. And I'm we are... stealing your puns. Yeah, it's normal. We do it back and forth. Either way, guys, we are done with picks and bans. You can see Origin looking at that same double TP strategy, and also their second Anivia game in a row. This will be an interesting one to watch for there, as they don't have that same late game AD carry power. They don't have a crit AD carry for Niels, who had put out some decent damage as Sivir. So now they're up against that same difficult Jinx team fight, and now even stronger Victor team fight without the same kind of DPS themselves. Pekka needs to keep his ulti up a lot, a lot of time in these fights. So Kalista and Anivia in fights as your two like hyper carries, so to say, can yeah get your low damage composition overall and. The difference is, Flash Wolves now actually have the tools to close the gap. They can get to Callista, they can get to the Anivia. Sure, you may be able to wild growth them, but just Malphite ulti in, they need to flash those ultis. Those carries will need to have even get Distortion Boots to get out of those ultis. Yeah, and you talk about long duration Nivia ults, but both Victor ult and Malphite ult can stop that, so it might be a tough road ahead for Origin, but if you believe that they can do it, they're on the blue side this time around. Tweet hashtag OG went at Lalisports, or if you think Flash Wolves can make that comeback and bring it at least to a game four. Hashtag FW win. Guys, you at home are always part of this series, and you here in London are amazing, and we here on the desk are ready to cast it. Game two of the quarterfinals is coming up. Origin looking to make it 2-0. And I love how variant the team compositions are from game one to game two. I want to see how these teams constantly adapt to each other throughout this series. I also did receive confirmation as far as the Callista Tom Kent interactions. Tom Kent can eat someone, then gets fake called, yeah. and throw both. It even works on enemies. So if Tom Kent can somehow eat NL, this Callista, is, he can throw himself backwards and this really is the new Callista composition here. Yeah. yeah. That's no, no, no. Even that's that's Blitz Callista. Yeah, yeah, that was Ballista, but yeah. this is the new iteration of it. It's like you a become, trebuchet? You become, yeah, if you become the bullet. Now it's artillery. Like, I don't even remember what the, uh, the upgrade to in Civilization, but... Either way, we are getting ourselves into this one. One minute into the game. Standard landing assignments so far from pretty much everybody. Get the hides in the fog, and Neil's just chilling at the try brush. This is an incredibly annoying lane to lane against, though. Tom Kench combined with Kalista. Kench can walk up slow. You that doesn't really get punished. If you're focusing, then Niels gets the time to attack. If Tom Kench is allowed to get close enough, though, then in addition to his own passive like procs that he makes, he sets up the W uh, proc from Kalista too. So a lot of damage coming out. So NL and Sword Art at all costs have to keep people away from them. If they close the yep. gap, an aggressive flash from Miffy could spell demise for either NL or Sword Art. Yeah, and they had such a disastrous early laning phase in game one against the Alistair. I'd expect them to actually be playing the early laning phase quite passive. Well, we'll see how the lanes pan out as we start ourselves into the game. We will have mirror duo lanes. Both of them going to start with a jungle camp. Niels and Mithy starting the Krugs, Crepo. No comment, right. no comment. No comment. The efficiency. I think it's actually the smart way to do it, though. Pull in a big one, denies an auto attack, spread out the passives. Don't steal it on support, even though you want level two. Look at how low Morgana gets, though, from doing this uh, Grom start. You can actually out pressure them right now and ra ra uh, win the race to level two. Hey, you got, you got Targon stacks. The first two minions are free, so as soon as the wave comes in, you can knock those down. So as and amazing, going to be taking down the Krugs, and Soaz is given yeah. the blue buff, by the way. That's so in his one-on-one, -on -one, he's got the buff lead. That's what most top lane jungle pairing should do if your top lane uses mana and you have a Rek'Sai. In the game, Rek'Sai has very minimal benefits off the blue buff early on in the game. 
So I like that call. We'll see if he can outpressure Stake. Also, a lot of times you would see the Malphite get a blue buff if he's going to be in a lane swap scenario. But two games in a row, no lane swaps. I just want to see where these junglers meet up because they both started on the top side of the map, pathing downwards for either a gank in mid from the right side or a potential bot lane gank because we've seen a lot of explosions. But again, this time double teleport on the side of Origin, whereas Flash Wolves are running Ghost on their mid laner. So once again, Maple picking for the matchup one on one, even though he wasn't getting that much done in it. Peke can make some good TP plays. Mythic taking some poke doesn't care too much about. Of course, Dark Findings are never going to affect Niels. But Mythic can just eat the guy, so yeah. this yeah. matchup is going to be hard to win. For you have a safety blanket to if Niels gets hit. It's already incredibly hard to hit that guy. Phenomenal AD carry player. And then Mythic can move up and just soak the bindings every time. Because if you don't use it on him and he suddenly sidesteps it, well then you're in a whole uh, lot of danger there. Because you can get eaten and then Niels can simply kill you. And look at Soaz already making a lot of moves here. Now both players do have summoner teleport. So as far as getting back to base and healing back up, that's not a problem. Also, both junglers currently on the bottom side of the map, so no dives either, but Peke finding those pushes. The mark of a good Anivia player. He I see Jazz smile. E with his Q in the air. Crepo, it's the seal of approval for his Anivia. You'd hope if he's played at three games at Worlds, he knows <laughs> how to play Anivia. Doesn't deactivate R. <laughs> he's freak. Some of the minor mechanic points. Urgh. Now, but honestly, yeah, it's been a great... He's stacking his tier. That's what he was doing. One tick at a time. I mean, you also get a stack for deactivating. Which <laughs> he gets more snacks if he leaves it on. <laughs> it's true. I know. Well, I mean, it depends on the cooldown. Well, more trades, though. This is actually going pretty yeah. well for Maple. Of course, Peke, again, does have teleport. He can leave, get back in. Cheeky little move there from Maple. Hides in Fog of War on the side is what we actually saw a lot in Season 1 and 2. Morganas will always hide in that brush and throw their skill shit out. Cancels Xpeke's base, so... Yeah. This is actually really base from a Xpeke. poor place in the lane for Xpeke to be and it leaves him vulnerable. Uh, it would leave Amazing vulnerable to counter jumping. It also makes his bottom lane dangerous because Amazing has no presence in that lane, and that means Karsa can sneak in behind. That's one of the reasons that Maple is playing so aggressive. And he can't teleport into the bot lane because he's too low. The Coon lands is going to be the run away as the bind <laughs> didn't hit Mippy. Hey, it, it cost them the flash, at least, so it is not a victimless gank, uh, but still. Nice little save there by Mithy and Niels. The binding going wide is the biggest thing there. Xpeke really hates missing CS. In a previous game, we've seen him base back to lane with oh. teleport on 40% mana. This time, he bases back with teleport on 80% HP. He doesn't even wait to regen up. He just instantly wants to get back to that lane. Unless he got hit by a laser. Could have been hit by a laser. Well, we've, seen, lane. Yeah, we've seen a lot of times, though, Peke, with teleport, can be losing the lane or dying, but keeping his CS up. He values it so highly in the early game often to the detriment of Origin because he loses a lot of pressure within the mid, mid lane because of that. Uh, one unfortunate thing for him this game is even though he's been going the Rod of Ages build, he didn't have enough gold to back and get the Rod of Ages, so he's actually gone for a tier. Meanwhile, Maple got a very ideal back timing. Victor wants to go back after he's reached 1,000 gold, and then a little bit more to even pick up a pink Carson horse. Snuck so in. Really no Q. Oh, yeah. that's going to be a cocoon landing. The gravity well underneath Peke just gets a quarter of a second to flash away. And even if he doesn't die here, because of that tier build, this is what we very often see so in Nibia matchups. Maple on level 6 can flash on top of Peke, dodge the Q, and then just goes together with his ultimate and simply 1v1 Peke later on. So this is big. Karsa landing that cocoon from Bush is absolutely massive if they, if they can follow up on this. Of course, the bot lane is winning pretty handily for Origin right now. No level six just yet, so no easy fates call plays, but big CS lead down there. And the top lane is as well. So the side lanes for Origin are playing very, very aggressively, which is what we do expect from Origin. And this is more of the lane performance from Soaz that we wanted to see in game one from him. Stake on Malphite, it's a bad matchup for the Malphite, especially when Lulu got to start with the blue buff. So he needs to actually punish that hard. And unless Karsa comes up, Soaz is going to get that top turret. He's already got it about three quarters down. It might just keep going this way. They've already... <clears throat> Both burn their first teleports for some items. You can see the double Doran's ring start for Soaz really itemizing for the laning phase itself for early pressure, and it's working. Look at how Maple shifts his playstyle. Instead of just pushing the lane over and over, he is now switching to a more zoning-oriented style. He wants uh, Peke to walk up for CS. If he has to use any spells, Maple can sidestep and really win that trade over and over. And Peke is slowly being whittled down, and he's still a ways off that catalyst. Well, if Stake can find a gank, he can always land the ulti onto Soaz. Lulu, of course, does have Flash, but Stake will be forced back before his teleport is back up. Amazing scouts out the map, but Sword Art's already playing for the early lane swap. They got the BF Sword and immediately run top yeah. lane to get out of that matchup. The timing of this 
lane swap from Flash Wolves is actually very good because they will now effectively save this turret for a long period of time and stop a potential turret snowball right in its tracks. Now they're actually hoping for a turret trade, which is advantageous for Jinx. Flash Wolves has done this quite well in the past where they realize they have a losing lane and then swap to equalize that lane. It does sacrifice a dragon most of the time, but it's a trade that Flash Wolves has been surprisingly willing to take. And of course, with Origin keeping the lanes as they are, you expect NL and Sword Art to actually probably kill this top lane turret before too long. BF Sword Jinx level six, pretty good at destruction here. So even though Peke uh, will hold the mid lane and Niels can push down bottom, it'll be a trade probably. I just want to see Stake go mid. Go flash on Nivea, Malphite ulti combined with the spells from Victor on just a single tier. Nivea is enough to one shot at any position under the tower. And then you can even maybe get the egg afterwards. So could definitely be a play that the flash was looking for. So hanging around right now. Mithy actually joining Soaz there. So Callista was alone and is actually fighting Stake by themselves. You see a lot of yeah. red stacks though. Stake, of course, did itemize towards armor. Notice the fact that no he wanted to be think. in this matchup. Didn't go Cowl first. Knew he was going to be fighting the AD carry and bought Cloth Armor on the first back. Second back. Yeah, and also note that Karsa has already completed Sightstone at about 7 minutes and 45 seconds and gotten two deep wards in the blue jungle during the lane swap. Flash Wolves initiated the lane swap early, got deep wards, and if trends hold, Amazing won't get that sight stone until about 15 minutes for the same level of ward coverage. So even though Origin is stronger in full-on fights, we'll see if Flash Wolves can use some of this vision advantage they get from the earlier warding upgrades to pull something out. And again, we're approaching 10 minutes, 0-0 zero, zero on the board, and this is a style Flash Wolves are incredibly comfortable playing. They really want these slow 0 to 15 games, these okay 15 to 30 minutes, but then these explosive post 30 games where just NL can AoE crit people to death with his rockets. Pretty much jinx the team. A jinx or more composition? Yeah. I'm Except literally it's just a jinx. <laughs> like, yeah. And you get a black shield. All right. It's more about the play style around him than the necessarily the team composition. For the steal, not going to do it. Successful blue buff goes over, but Soaz actually, because of all the help he was getting from Mithy, and with Karsa running down yeah. the bottom side, just pressure was gained, and Soaz, high level on yeah. Lulu, gets the turn anyway. Huge swing in the game, really. Soaz with a two-level advantage over NL, even though he was up against an AD carry, that's a situation where the support swapping with the top laner was really bad for the AD carry, so Flash Wolves actually has to abandon that lane swap because they realized even when they swapped, they were losing both sides. Really big credit to Origin for finding the creative solution to that lane swap, and instead of swapping Neils up to match, they just kept Soaz there because they were able to complete the work Soaz did earlier on the turn. A lot of teams are afraid to leave Callista Soul in the lane because you lose the ability to proc that W passive in addition that she can get run down. But because Stake was so far behind and he was comfortable just dodging the ulti with Flash worst case, he was comfortable in that 1v1 just farming. He used to go back into this matchup with the top lane turret already gone and it's a 30 CS lead for the Origin AD carry. Pekka's Flash is back available right now too, so he did not get punished at all for using that early summoner. He picks up a little bit of health too with that Ruby Crystal, but he's switching his build. Looks like he's gonna go for an early Athenes instead. Or uh, an early Seraphs instead. Uh, no, actually, because yeah. that built into Nuisance Arts Rod now. This is only the nope. Rod of Ages. You're right. Yeah, I got changed. I yield. for a loop, too. I yield. Hey, we know these guys play 40 plus minute games, so a late Rod of Ages. <laughs> we were over this last Those game. Sides. It's generally okay, but it will delay the power spike for sure. Uh, although it will uh, increase the timing of him completing both the Seraphs and the Rod of Ages together. Just uh, weaker for longer and then stronger faster. See so if they can get through that lull. Meanwhile, Origin. Pushing amazing towards the top side. I don't know if Deep War is going to mean much. Baron's not up in two, three turrets, almost definitely not going to be killed. So, a bit strange to use the time there. The double teleport of Origin has not yet been used. There hasn't been that over aggression of the Flash of Duo lane. Little kills yeah. come in earlier. Origin's played both of these early games quite well. Game one, they were able to make aggressive moves early in the lane and utilize their teleport advantage to create gank advantages. This game, they're just playing their lanes very aggressively, and Flash Wolves isn't countering that. Maybe because they got burned a little bit by teleports in the last game, it's just leading to a pretty substantial, even lane, like, uh, standard laning phase, but giving them a big lead. Flash Wolves have yet to take a first tower in this entire tournament. They're playing so passive overall, and 
Peke right now, he can continuously use his teleport on Kula to get back to lane to keep the wave clear up. So it's impossible to kill Soas's tower. It's impossible to kill Peke's tower. It's maybe possible to kill Carson in a jungle, though. They're gonna eat him up. Spiders for lunch, and here we go. A bunch of bursts comes in, forced to flash. Black Shield is on, and they're gonna turn back onto Amazing. First blood comes through, the rocket misses, but here comes Anivia, and another kill comes back one for one, and Origin leave the jungle. Yeah, considering the investment Origin put into that one, trading kills amongst mid laners is actually not that huge of an edge. Especially when Flash gets the first blood. Yeah, a little bonus right there. Does assert some vision control within that side of the jungle, though, which now we'll see if Origin can put that pressure into the bottom side. So is even having a harder time dealing with Snake anymore. Okay, he's plus 20 CS. He kind of drew that back up there, but you just saw the last sort of remnants of a trade recently, and it wasn't exactly great for Soaz. The team's done now. Maybe we'll make that matchup a bit better. You look back at the bottom lane, and this one's actually still pretty incredible. Plus 24, and that turret is not taking too much damage because Origin are afraid of getting died. Or counter gank, rather. Played the Rune King being completed. <laughs> I don't know why Mithy would do that. It gives you moves when you get an ally, so if you're trying to get back in the lane from like warding or something, there's a possibility that it matters. And they expect you not to get ganked. But it saves you like a quarter second. It's barely worth it. Just testing that the VAR mechanic. Yeah. Testing. Can I eat you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can. Awesome. This Does this still work? Yeah. Okay, it does. Good. <laughs> Good to know for later on. Meanwhile, he's sitting at less than half mana. <laughs> Probably yeah, not the I'm best test. Not exactly efficient. Get YOLO. Win at Worlds. Test abilities. Not an important game or anything. You have a buffer, they're already up 1-0. Oh, that's true. You know what? They, yeah. they just throw this game. They just gotta win two of the next four. 50%. Flip coins. You'll be better than spawn. It's a Nivea pick, though. It makes so much sense against a team that is so slow. It's a little risky into LeBlanc, but Peke is comfortable playing it. Into the Victor, it's fine. It just becomes a wave for the matchup. You press E, I press R, we both start with the wave, it disappears. It's totally goes on. Yeah, it's totally a far matchup. Uh, often it also punishes the person who gets aggressive because both Victor and Anivia are stronger when the opponent's running at them than running at their opponent. So really, uh, very little will happen in that mid lane. <laughs> and they both got kills on people in the enemy jungle and we look, even though we are tied by most metrics, it's a 2,000 gold lead for Origin, mostly from farm. Interesting that Mithy went for a non mobi boot approach on the support, so he actually usually likes those mobility boots to get wards in, but because he's playing such a frontline, and he just wants to soak up cooldowns, and then eat up his allies anyways just to save them, he goes for it. Yeah. Knowing that the CC chain is what kills you on yeah. Flash Wolves. It's, it's actually a really smart purchase by Mithy. I've seen far too many players go Ninja Tabi against Ooh, the team. With good wall here by Xpeke. Great zone. Gonna block the movement away from the team so no one can stop Origin from knocking this turret down. Beautiful play. Makes the turret score 2-0. to zero. Can't wait for there. If you're not there, really good wall. Just blocking Maple right here after you picked up that blue buff. And very often, that's a mistake we still see too often. Why do you need that blue buff so you can wave there more? Why do you need a wave there to save that tower? Well, if you go to the blue buff and you lose your tower in the process, it doesn't make sense at all. That was cute. That's interesting. Gives the Targon stack over to Niels. That was awesome. Mithy's played play top edge before. Uh, yeah, he knows his mechanics better than Peke's and Nivea. Nice little play. Peke knows his mechanics on Nivea Freak. We've already been over. He was stacking his team. Yeah, okay. Please, nice. harping on this one little point. Nice. Give the nice guy game. a break, he's played for like five years. <laughs> <laughs> this is fifth, this is the he was season one world champion freak. Yeah. That's where, where, where was were you, you in season one? Uh, casting the world championship, where were you? Were you talking about the Anivia mechanic then? Peck probably actually, knew No one played the champion. I actually subbed it was for that in season one. The mechanic Worlds. wasn't uh, in Anivia back in season one. It got added All this right. year. So I don't want to hear your crap, chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> Calm down. All right, nice banter. <laughs> some, uh, Cheeky. Banter. Some witty banter. Cheeky. <laughs> well, 3,000 gold is nearly the lead here. That mid lane turret going down. We really do out. have the time to talk about these mechanics. And <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> slow. I was trying to get us back on track well, with the scoreline. Yeah. Yeah. You just threw it right back off. A lot of it has to do with just item threshold. So, Soas has hit a pretty large amount of CDR uh, going at themes, which is a little bit slower than the Morellanomicon ability you see out of many Lulus, but 
will allow him to push harder against Stake, whose only way of fighting back is with is, is with magic damage. Uh, Peke finishes Rod of Ages, Abyssal Scepter is completed onto Maple. So really, teams just hitting the power spikes, but at relatively the same time. So it's kind of tough for the teams to punish. It's hard to regret that the Fischio's not here because he always loves harping about Victor builds. And we see Abyssal first picked up by Maple here on that Victor. That's something we're not quite used to seeing. You are running it into double AP, but it's just... Yeah, stalls your damage. Usually Victors go for a heavy AP build with CDR boost just to blow you up, blow you out of the water immediately. He's going for events, a very defensive uh, Victor build overall. I think Flash will just have more damage as a team though if you look at the roster there. So surviving the initial run of it, I guess yeah. up for the bait, Krepo shook his head and said, I don't think so, so. It'll really depend on the fight because we know how much late game damage it's it's can do. Still, Maple's just He's having back. to walk through those places. Uh oh, the whole team's going around. An amazing tank sub binding to the face of stun comes back through an Akarsa, flashing away, but it doesn't matter because the Chaos Storm, Maple gets the kill. A great flank by the Flash Wolves. Yeah, punishing Origin for trying to move up. They were pushed to that turret, but they didn't have the ward control to track where Flash Wolves would be rotating. However, in doing so, they exposed the bottom turret. Really smart of Niels to immediately push that minion move. Yeah, kill for tower, generally okay trade. Keep the map under control. Flash Wolves looking to capitalize with a dragon here. But this is something we'll see more from Xpec in this matchup. Hang on, teleport coming in. And so us oh, flanking. Uh, and Mithy bought some time as well, so Flash Wolves actually give up on this one. Peke has TP. And of course, amazing when he popped an ulti, so the teams still Drawing battle lines back and forth. Maple shields the Q, doesn't take too much damage there. Rek'Sai pokes in from the side. Stake is back in the top lane, has teleport up. and can use that to join this fight though, and it looks like he just might. Here comes the re-engage on a one hit point ward. Karsa comes back in, Stake to buy some time, and the dragon goes to flash over, but the fight is not done yet. Stake comes up with the rest of the team, walks towards the left. They do not yet look for Pekka here. Cocoon misses, and they will not land the stun on Karsa, who repels up. So that's gonna look for the Glitter Lance, does land it. Karsa very low, has to flash out. Such a weird fight right there as Peke teleported into the mid lane, which allowed Flash Wolves to sneak into the middle of that a little bit. And then a missed rend by Niels allows the smite to consume it for Karsa. Flash Wolves gets a drag in a tricky situation, but how much pressure will they lose? Yeah, mediocre wall there by Xpeke. Needs to work on his Gandalf impersonation. Did let them pass, in fact, but he had some really nice stunts to follow that up overall. Really good predict on NL. He walked straight into the stun trunk to enforce the Black Shield. So Flash Wolves, after that moment, couldn't fight anymore. So they were very happy that they got that dragon. And then some good prediction, forcing Karsa eventually to flash out. Yeah, Niels didn't want a Malphite to be right next to him at the start of this. So he does uh, oh. honor, honor it with his own. He saw Karsa that was going to come in for the bite smite, which is roughly a thousand damage execute. So I can see why Niels would miss that. He still probably should have waited a little bit longer. Uh, because he basically just gave the dragon. Well, Flash Wolves do get on the board as far as dragons. They had already knocked down a turret as well. That was down to the bottom lane earlier. We see, this to a 2000 gold game. we see just how hard it is to make any semblance of a siege into Anivia. Pekka can even wall you off if you're threatening his zone. So you really want a Baron to really beat that Anivia. Once you get those minions almost immune to magic damage, just very little damage taken, then you can start sieging on the Anivia. Or you need to really split push, but that's not going to happen into Soas's wave clear. So we could see a very heavy emphasis from Flash Wolves on this Baron. In addition that their comp just punishes you walking in. If you're walking into the dark, into mm -hmm. Binding, Cocoon, and Stake with Malphite ulti, that is really hard to do, so Origin will need to keep their vision control up. Right now, looking at their vision, they've got really just wards around the river. There's one slightly deep in the mid lane. You're seeing that here to watch some of the movements. But Flash Wolves actually kind of own this entire southern jungle quadrant right now, Karsa. Got some wards down, he's got some spider links looking at what's going on around here, and Flash Wolves have the chance of making a play around the side of the map. Now, we once again see the matchups uh, pan out. Stake is matching up against Deals, and Maple hitting the bot lane up against Soaz. And look what Miffy's doing. If for whatever reason, Xpeka can't get in range to safely put his ulti, well, he can put it unsafely. Miffy can simply just eat him whenever he gets bound and just drag him back to the tower. So, almost impossible to do anything in mid lane, which is Flash Wolves' favorite lane. They play a very centric style. And they're just not working against this Anivia pick. Yeah, and so far Flash Wolves has had trouble keeping up with Origin since Origin has been winning and pushing the lanes consistently. Karsa has been ineffective on this Elise pick, and now they're going a little bit under the turret, but Stake is a bit of a rock. Look at that great health though from Mithy. Oh, that binding hits though? Sweet. Oh. <laughs> Ta da! There was actually a spot for Malphite to ult uh, Mithy though. He had actually had turret aggro, that's why his health got so low. 
you can't shield during a stun. So if actually if Snake ults, me probably. Well, I guess the fate's the fates call them out. Yeah, so I forgot. This lane is impossible. It's to kill. so hard to play against. It's like a thresh, a thresh Kalista where they can both save themselves and each yeah. other. It gets even harder because of just the hard CCs. Cocoon lands, maybe doesn't care. Niels presses R. Yeah. Like Thresh Callista, except you can save them through hard CCs. Yeah, that's true. You can remove them from the map. They're Shorter gone. Shorter ranged, at least. All right, so the recalls with... Oh, no, we're going to go back to the lane here. So Origin putting actually a lot of effort in making this top lane happen, but a defensive pink board by Karsa gets rid of some of the vision, and there's really not a lot of resources around there. Amazing is no tunnels on this side of the map. He can't show up either. And Maple, he's looking for a very different approach here on Victor, going for that Abyssal into Lich Bane, saying he wants to repetitively cast a lot of spells and does... He wants to make these fights long with repetitive spell usage as opposed to being like a one bomb of a Victor, just blow somebody up immediately. Yeah, I've seen a lot of different approaches to Victor. I think Lich Bane is one of the most underutilized, but it does make the Victor uh, a riskier pick. Yeah. So gotta, I think that's one of the big reasons. If he's going to be bringing Ghost as a summer spell, it's more apt to the Lich Bane style because he's getting in range for the auto attacks to proc the Lich Bane. And it's a very kite based style, maybe trying to just uh, kill the front line. It's also very, very good at killing the front line on Victor. We'll see how that ends up playing out because it takes a long time to activate. It really won't be that powerful until not only after Lich Bane, but then his big ability power item. And it really makes the build not come fully together until you're pretty much item capped, especially with the Abyssal Scepter in there. He's got to go Lich Bane, third upgrade on his hex core, death cap, then you're still not talking about void staff. Yeah. It actually makes it so you can't build that Zonia's hourglass if you want to hit your max ability power. Uh, so it's a very convoluted build but can still be effective. I think it's the wrong build in this approach though. Really against Origin with again double carry, you just wanna well, wait for a misposition from Mithy flashing and blow up. Specifically against uh Nibia Lulu as yeah, well. Because those kiters. are two that are very good kiters and the Lich Bane is actually a build that wants to kite itself. It's Interesting choice for Maple. It's more assassin based, which is kind of his playstyle. It does at least give him movement speed. He got the distortion upgrade for his boots as well, so a lot of boost speed for the champion. But we'll see how it pans out in team fights. The top lane pressure finally works out, and Origin knocked down turret number four. I mean, look at who's in the mid lane. Jungle support and mid laner, five against three, can hold that tower. That should never happen usually, but because of the mechanics of, of a Tom Kench and the easy wave from Anivia, Origin takes the easy tower top. <laughs> If he takes the bind, he has to flash too. Surprise amazing even a flash with Mithy having his W up right there could save anyone. Yeah, that seems weird. There is an exposure in the mid lane right here though because uh, there's a lot of split push pressure going on for Origin. We've been talking so much about these Victor builds, we haven't really talked about how Flash Wolves is getting crushed. And look at all those damage coming across though, and Niels predicts the Flash but burns Rend, but only to get rid of some minions, so he's got the Rend Where back up for Stake. Stake ults over the wall, and there's the Flash, another Rend, but Niels no longer has any CC. This Q could allow Stake to run the hops, still landing oh. the long range. Snipe actually gets the kill. That's a flank. And here comes Mithy, gets stunned, gets pretty <laughs> deaded. Maybe not the greatest, so as for us to flash away. Rocket not gonna land, but Neil's still on the chase. Grab to well, buy some time in a beautiful wall, but Karsa just jumps to the minions. A one for one overall. The sequence of events. First of all, Origin overextend a little bit when they get too comfortable. They have to blow two flashes. They react really well with some fantastic mechanic of plays to even that out on Neil's. But overall, you see that little greed again on Origin. Amazing and Miffy shouldn't be up that far in the mid lane initially. But because they always find these good plays, they do stay ahead. Yeah. 2,000 gold. I think that was a series of myth plays, actually, by the people who were dead. Flash yeah. uses his flash, or Stake uses his flash and Unstoppable Force escaping. But with the distance he covered, he could have been in his own base with that escape instead of dying towards the Baron buff. And then secondly, Mithy comes in by himself, no other threat to spit out, is instantly killed before anyone can arrive. Those are just mistakes, and it ends up for a kill on both sides. And this happens so much for Flash Wolves. They're it, only 2,000 gold down 26 minutes in, but it feels like they've been getting destroyed for the first 26 minutes. The thing is, they're tied in turrets, they're up a kill, they're tied in dragons. It's just the farm, it's just standard origin gameplay where they greed for farm. There's a 40 CS lead for the AD carry, a 50 CS lead in the mid lane, 30 up in the top lane. They're just killing more little robotic, helpless minions. We actually tracked this in the period from 15 to 30 minutes. On an average game, origin farms 75 minions more. 
than the Flash Wolves in the average game. So that's exactly the goal differential that we're probably seeing here. But also, between 15 minutes and 30 minutes, Origin is the least bloody team at Worlds. That's total kills and deaths in that period of the game. And most of the blood is then dying. They're yep. just getting caught clear Because they're silent. literally just farming at this point in the game. But just wait, wait hey. till later in the game. Obviously, it won't happen exactly at 30 minutes like it did last game. I mean, if a European team is gonna do well at Worlds, it is with a very late game, a Nivea-centric style, always very <laughs> supreme. That's how Moscow 5 did so well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, got it. Galera, really unique mid laner, yeah. and one of the best supports in Europe. Moscow 5. Sword Art running away though, Chomper is drawing a bit, a bit of time, has a flash away from the binding, now Karsa, whoa, didn't want to be there, Mithy takes a bind, but, you know, he's got, yeah, there you go, you get a teammate. Stake is right there though. Gets knocked up, Mithy's got to be a bit careful, has some grey health though, Stake doesn't really want to be in this fight, has ulti, there we go, a massive knockup, and here comes the chain CC and the damage, there come the resets, and Jinx is excited to start knocking people down, Pekka has to flash, Zap will hit, oh the wall. no, Pekka, the wall by the <laughs> But the binding lands, and here comes the re-engage cocoon on a chopper's on the death, and Flash Wolves kill everybody. It's unbelievable the way Flash Wolves consistently finds these team fights, but it's not quite over yet. Rek'Sai on the way, Neil sealed up through some very low Flash Wolves, but they pack a lot of damage. And he comes in amazing. He cannot be He's allowed crazy. to steal this. And Sword Art does die. It's a one for one. Baron still goes over. Neils has to run. Dies nice the Oh, that's the victor speed, though. And he's a pretty quick one. Maple says goodbye. Eight to three flash rolls with a delayed ace for one kill. But Origin, with the disrespect, they had multiple exits out of that fight, and they chose to fight. Just keep an eye on stake. He goes in at any given moment. Right here, they can disengage. They can at least take it alone. They still decide to fight with Olivia Q, Wall and R down. And then it's the easiest ulti from yeah. Stake's life. Maple flashes over and Wombo combo. Origin groups up in far too small of an area. Malphite Ultimate should not be able to hit three when Origin has been split pushing down four to five turrets here. And then Flash Wolves just out executes the instant Origin makes a mistake. Yeah, they wait for the egg to almost be over, chain binds the cocoon, then Pekka drops. And we saw it last game too. How do you win with a Nivea composition? You kite. You don't run into them because they can turn the fight on you. If you let them walk to you, you can use those spells so easily. Combine that with a Lulu, that's exactly the same. How long will it take this game for Origin to learn their mistake again? Well, Carcel right now on the wrong side of this fight. Takes turret aggro, gets a shield all as well. Neils, though, chunked down to under 1,000. Yep, thanks to the Jinx damage. NL's at that late game point already. Full, da like the highest possible damage, three item Jinx build. Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, Last Whisper. Low on the lifesteal, high on the damage. And it's a huge threat for Origin, who's trying to split push with the Lulu right now. This is really dangerous. Uh, Peke gets saved by Mithy. The front line is safe, and down goes the tier two turret at the top lane. 1600 gold lead for the flash rolls. The push towards Peke. The flash cocoon lands. It's not quite enough to kill him, though, as Peke gets a shield and a summoner heal as well. And here comes another chance for the fight. Mithy gets saved, runs himself back. Origin get away. Origin having to use every single one of their kiting and staying alive tools, and they barely stop that from turning into a disaster. If Peke goes down, they probably lose an inhibitor cleanly. They're still in danger, though. Well, nice so ball. is Maple. Takes a bunch of damage. Got eat the him. Chase are coming through many, many stuns, but NL is overextended, but Niels can't do the damage through the summoner heal. Four poke comes by, no stun. Ghost used by Maple, trying to get away fast. 50 seconds on the next dragon. It's only one apiece. That won't be a exactly game-turning dragon. But we'll see which team gets it. Yeah, Niels needs to be able to find really aggressive positioning in these fights, I feel like, for Origin to win, because they have, like, we were talking about this earlier, the perfect trinity of protection on your team. You have your AD carry and your Lulu, but then if either of those guys get focused because they can kind of protect each other, you also have Mithy to eat him and keep him safe. It's worked amazingly with Jinx, which is a higher damage AD carry. Yeah. Uh, Kalista's gonna have to play very aggressively to make it work, though. But that's the problem, is Tom Kench works when your team is winning. Tom Kench works when you're saving from very specific long cooldowns. Like, he's good against Assassin, he's good against Zed, good against LeBlanc, things like this. But Maple has low cooldowns, and he's Lich Bane focused. Anytime Niels is in range of anyone important, Maple Bob. Q autos him. And Maple's better at that than Niels is. See a different build here from Sword Art. Good flash here by Soaz, dodging Stake Ultimate. Collapse yep. on the top from Maple, though. Sidestep Wow, so has dodged that.
well slowed by Stakes Q. Do have to know Stake isn't Max Q with his last spell. Or is trying to cross mid. But they're afraid. Even no though Malfoy ulti is down, the whole team is mid lane. They're not even attacking this turret right now. They, minions all die off. Maple's oh. very far off, though. Sword That's Arco huge wall. On the long side of the wall. That is a big one. He eats him as well. Tom Kench will get the first one. Minty gets the kill credit. The knockup goes only on the support. And they push in. And they cut NL. Goodbye. Three kills for Origin. And these are 40 second death timers with a minion wave in tow. How much can Origin get out of this, especially if Soas can stop the recalls? He Flash moves it. completely lost in rotation here. Their base is getting smashed. Oh my god. So as he stopped both recalls, Origin's going to get a lot. No one's in the base at all for another 25 seconds of the respawns come through. The inhibitor is a formality. Meanwhile, Mithy joins for the fight on the stakes, so they're taking a finger, an arm, and maybe the whole body. Inhibitor will drop. The minion wave is gone in mid. There's no comeback there. Maple's gonna go for a kill here, though. So as is out of mana, he puts the shield onto himself, the flash in. There's the chaos storm. There's the kill. Maple is scary. Mithy's shield's going to end. There's another attempt, but a great wall comes in. The double stun in, but still a double kill for Maple. Respectable play on both sides there as Peke teleported at the end of that fight. Yeah, and both of these very big losing fights have come due to a, just a massive amount of disrespect for the core of elements of a champion. Origin lose when they don't respect the Malphite ulti. Flash tools, they lose when they don't respect the Nivea's kit. She can alter the pathing in these very clutch fights here because look at this wall coming down from Xpeka right here. Zones of Sword Heart and then Karsa goes in afterwards. There's still so much zone right here, and then Soas starts annoying Stake in the back. By the way, Stake did not have ultimate. He used it earlier, so... Yeah, there's no way they can punish within that corridor, so the instant that Flash Wolves re-engaged, it was a big mistake. Unless Maple was in that fight to begin with and could land large amounts of AoE, uh, but he was very easily zoned away by Soaz on the bottom side of that fight with now a death cap on Luke. An Abyssal Scepter coming in next, really making sure that these guys can survive this high uptime damage Victor build, who just wants to be a team fight machine at short range. The persistent damage of a Lich Bane feels really wants it. He feels so safe. Yeah, He's this is the aggression the right here from him, but the Malphite teleport is in. Where's the fight? Oh, they're gonna go back on towards Sword Art. Minty tosses himself backwards. Niels runs away, dodges the rocket. Sword Art Black Shield on himself, lock it as well on him. But a few more attacks will do it. There's the red, there's the kill for Niels. And Amazing finds the knockup on Akarsa. Gravity will buy some time, jumps over the wall to the Wolves. Akarsa's flashless. He's got nowhere to go. Yeah, this was actually just a fantastic team fight realization from Mithy. Instead of tunnel visioning and throwing himself forward, he went backwards and killed the threat of a zoning Sword Art. Sword Art was about to move in the back of the Origin lineup, press ulti on four people. This would allow Stake to get a four-man ulti off. But they realized if you get flanked, what you do is you engage on the weakest part of the flank. Take that out and you make that your escape route. Exactly what Origin did and they win the fight convincingly. He's gonna greed for the bot lane tier two. Should be easy with two members dead. And we take a quick look at the score, but it's only 3,000 gold apart and Flashers are actually still ahead in kills as a team. This is still a neck and neck battle. And with Baron down for these respawns, both teams can contest that objective. Yeah, so Tom Kench comes in on one side to begin this one, which is actually what split up Flash Wolves to begin with. Obviously, good play by Mithy, but then Niels is playing confidently on the other I side. Lied. I lied. I completely yeah, they lied. They in. brought Sword Art in. I saw yeah. him flank right there, but he was just pulled to the side. Yeah, He's that was that was the Callista Tom Kench combo that you dream of when you see the champion kits, and they pull it off at that Worlds man. here. So makes it's pretty my awesome. Point in ballot. We know what's great is, even though we don't see much Skarner anymore at Worlds, we just Skarner see Skarner version. Build your own Skarner. I mean, is this like the better Skarner though? Or is it is it the worst one? I guess it requires more setup, but the fact that it happened at all is pretty great. Yeah, and I do have to point out that Niels has leapfrog NL as far as uh, power spiking goes right now. NL still waiting on Bloodthirster, which he needs to be super relevant, but double life steal as well as last whisper on Niels and heavy amounts of protection, almost overly so. They used the Comp Kenji when he wasn't actually under much threat. Oh, there's the Inhibity Wall. Cars has to jump away and Amazing is already there for the knockout, but maybe he didn't want to go this way. Could have been a miss, but has to run and run and hide. Gets eaten by Mithy, who takes a fair bit of damage. <laughs> Push himself back out, amazing pops out of the stomach, and now where's we the turn? We're gonna see Stake go in. Two men knock a Peke and Niels. Rocket on the side, Mithy gets the shield. Stake gonna get dropped dangerously low. He does not go down though, and NL tries to run. Flashes the wall, stays alive. Binding on the Niels' face. QSS on the chase, gets the kill on a rampage. Stake.
recalling dangerously, and Maple is crushing faces. Whoa. A double kill. Now the battle versus Neil's Gravity Well will get dodged away from. One more attack will do it. He's trying to hide. A stun from Karsa. Maple survives. It's a two for one overall advantage to Flash Wolves. Amazing on the chase. Smites in. Neil's gets one kill. Maple gets a shield, but it's not enough. Two more in the cleanup for Origin. They win the fight. Origin is just outlasting Flash Wolves in these team fights. So many ways for Origin to block and defy death. Flash Wolves just can't spread out their damage enough. Maple did a hell of a job on the outside of that fight to get the double kill, but you could see he could not do much more than that, and Niels was running amok. Yeah, incredible tenacious composition here from Origin, and really just got use of the Devour, Fate Skull to reposition, and then just turning the fight at critical points. These shields repetitively coming in from Soas, keeping people alive, and now Origin setting up for an easy Baron. There's no way Karsa can steal this due to the amount of spears that will be in it. And Karsa was even revealed on Wards going back into his base, realizing there was no chance at all for the steal in the first place, so no contest is what's said here by the Flash Wolves. Easy rend, easy pickup. 5,000 gold lead plus Dragon, Baron. And really not a good wall here. It forces them to go on the defensive and leaves all the options open for Origin. I think this is a bit of a mistake for Amazing following suit, but again, you see the tenacity of this composition. If you can just eat him, peel, and get pulled back here, and then they turn on stake. Yeah. Even if the knockup misses, they still win that fight. And you can see all the opportunity Origin creates with those plays, but now we don't have time for that. The fight was so long, time for the next one. And we're gonna look for the steal, and yes, it's an early spite. Actually, a non spite from Carson. Now a knockup by Amazing. Blue team does get Dragon number two. And now Flash will force to run a great stun on a stake. Another one on a Maple as well. He goes in, but the ult hits basically nothing. Nothing gets done. Maple survives, though. The first kill comes through to Peke. But Neos wreaking havoc in the back line. Double lifesteal taking up a lot. Stuns don't mean enough, and the kills keep coming through. This could be a whitewash in the favor of Origin. A double for Soaz. Flash Wolves lose three. Flash Wolves once NL drops. They're just running out of damage. Cars is cornered in right now. Sword out. Saying, see you later, I'm just gonna go to base, and you can just see Origin, all they have to do is commit to kill one of the carries, and Flash Wolves, they just run out of damage. Yeah, Origin really taking over in these team fights. Also, what is NL doing with these Super Mega Death Rockets, using them at the start of fights when the burst just isn't there? And Origin has really, really long death timers. They might end the game. They've got a Baron buff, they've got a full health AD carry, and they've got about 30 seconds to work with. They're going for the 2-0 right now. Nexus turret number one is in their eyes. Sword Art does not deal any damage. There is no hope anymore for the Flash Wolves. So in front of the home crowd, Origin start their quarterfinals 2-0. to zero. You can't ask for a better start in a best of five than a 2-0 for Origin, but they have won two incredibly close and competitive games where both teams have held gold leads late into the match. You wonder how this will play on the mentality of Flash Wolves and Origin because they have been capable of playing Origin close, but they are down 2-0, and now they're faced with having to reverse sweep to stay alive. I mean, this almost exact thing happened in the actual group stage for the Flash Wolves. They started their series one and two, and then they 3-0'd. They reverse swept their group, essentially. So uh, the ability to dig deep and then come back for the last three very important games is certainly a possibility, though, of course, uh, it, it is a, a difficult one. Origin are showing that they are good competitors here. They need to start adapting to this Anivia pick, though. Punish it early. They blew Expecca's flash early game. Didn't come back to punish them, even though they have a point, point and click knockup from uh, Stakes Malphite right there to really break that game up. In addition to that, they don't respect the way Anivia alters team fights, mostly due to yeah. the wall mechanic and then putting the ulti down. The amount of zone control in jungle fights, you don't find Anivia in the jungle. You will lose those fights. And that impacted the rotations for Flash Wolves, and they kept losing these towers in the mid lane for what seemed like no reason at all, and that's the way Origin kind of caught themselves back into the game. Well, Flash Wolves, they do get blue side next game, so they can spend one of those three sort of free bans on the Anivia. We'll see if they can get rid of some of the strategies here of Origin, but as we've talked about the game, we're going to throw it over to talk about that 2-0 at the Analyst Desk.